Software Defined Access or ST Access Design. This video covers the following subject ST Access Architecture, ST Access Fabric Design Consideration for Wired and Wireless Access. In the first part, ST Access Architecture, it discusses an intent based networking solution for the enterprise built on Cisco Digital Network architecture and in the SD access fabric design consideration for wired and wireless access we will explore about the several key factors including overlay fabric design control plane design border design segmentation virtual network and also fabric wireless actually in this video i am going to use the video that i have created for the ensld course the designing cisco enterprise network the ensld exam will test your understanding of this st access design concepts from a networking and security perspective and CCMP enterprise designers might, must take into account the new ST access design models when designing new campus environment. This video starts by covering ST access architecture for the underlay, overlay, control and data planes and automation. Next, it explores fabric consideration for overlay and fabric design. It wraps up with an overview of ST access border design segmentation and also wireless access don't forget here only we discuss about some of the concept of the st access uh, related to design and in future videos we will learn more than this about the configuration and concepts of the st access in this video i'm going to talk about st access design actually in this video we will learn about the consideration for wired and wireless access including overlay fabric design control plane design border design segmentation virtual networks scalability over the top wireless fabric wireless and multicast in the st access first let me to review about the ST Access architecture. You know that Cisco Software Defined Access or ST Access is an intent based networking solution for the enterprise that is built on the foundation of Cisco Digital Network Architecture or DNA. The ST Access solution provides automated end to end segmentation for users and devices from the edge of the network to applications. ST Access leverage Cisco DNA Center to provide the design setting, policy definition, and automated provisioning of network devices, along with assurance analytics for both wired and wireless network. Two main components make up ST Access architecture. First, Cisco DNA Center. Second, ST Access Fabric. Cisco DNA Center has a rich set of features and benefits that are grouped into this core area automation design policy provision and assurance okay and you know that in st access fabric the, we have the st access fabric consists uh, consists of the physical and logical network infrastructure about the st access or cisco software defined access we have many benefits include automation policy assurance integration automation simplifies deployment of network devices and enables consistent management of both wired and wireless network configuration about the policy this is the automated configuration enables group-based security policies and network segmentation assurance contextual insight enable quick issue resolution and capacity planning and integration st access is open and programmable for third party integrated solutions in this figure we can see the st access with cisco dna center at top providing network services to the physical uh, physical and logical infrastructure below it as you can see in cisco dna center we have three important parts policy automation and also assurance and here we can see the st access fabric include the wired devices wireless devices okay and here we have uh, for example some iot or internet of thing network and also employee network you will learn more than this about the st access design now we are reviewing the st access architecture 
About the ST axis fabric, you know that we have two different layers make up the ST axis fabric, underlay and also overlay. Underlay, this layer is responsible for physical devices and traffic uh, forwarding. As you can see here, we have the underlay include multiple devices, multiple physical devices. Also, we have overlay. Overlay, this is a logical layer that that consists of wired and wireless users where service and policies are applied. The layered separation between the overlay and underlay allows for one or more logical networks to be provisioned to meet the design intent without changing anything on the underlay. As you can see, we have one physical fabric topology and we can create multiple virtual networks, okay, with the help of separation of underlay and overlay. The use of overlay and fabric has been around for quite some time. Networks are, that are built with MPLS, GRE, and DMVPN are examples of technologies that use tunneling to create overlay networks. SD-WAN is another example of a WAN technology that creates overlay networks networks over physical transport using internet and also MPLS circuits. About the underlay, uh, we can say the underlay network is a collection of physical switches and rotors running a dynamic layer 3 routing protocol used as the underlaying transport for the ST access network. The underlay implementation uses a deterministic layer 3 routed design to ensure resiliency, performance, and scalability. Client traffic and endpoints are not part of the underlay network. Instead, they are part of the configured overlay network. Okay, Each network device used in the underlay networks needs to establish IPv4 connectivity with neighboring devices. Technically, any routing protocols can be used in the underlay network, but the use of a link state protocol is highly recommended to ensure good performance, scalability, and also resiliency. You know that we can deploy the network with a manual method or with automated method. Here, we are reviewing both of them. Actually, the first important notation is that for configuration of the underlay, we should use layer 3 uh, routing uh, protocol. We, we can use layer 3 routing protocol and it is recommended to use OSPF and ISIS. You know that ISIS and OSPF are a standard based link state routing protocols. ISIS is used in large service provider networks and is the protocol of choice for fabric based networks. And OSPF is used in enterprise and campus net environment. Link state routing protocols coverage more quickly than distance or we can say converge more quickly than distance vector routing protocols. And link state routing protocols are use areas and advertise information about the network topology instead of advertising the complete routing table. And you know that link state routing protocols use the SPF or shortest pass first al routing algorithm to find the shortest pass to each node in the routing topology. The Cisco DNA Center LAN automation feature uses the intermediate system to intermediate system or ISIS routing protocol. However, OSPF can also be used with manual configuration. Okay, actually, ISIS and OSPF are used for underlay switch configuration for uh, the benefits that they can provide for us. Because of that, here we can say if you implement the underlay manually, okay, you can use it is recommended to use OSPF or ISIS, but ISIS is better, it is uh, more scalable than OSPF. And in the automated underlay provisioning, okay, the DNA center uses the, uh, for example, ISIS or integrated system, inter intermediate system to intermediate system. Also, using a rotated access design prevents the need to run some protocols like STP, VTP, FHRP in the underlay network. Instead, you can use a logical fabric over the top of the underlay, which provide routing protocol benefits such as a multi-pass routing, fast convergence, and ease of management. Because of that, 
when we want to design the underlay we use the layer tree network okay and uh, because of that we don't have stp we don't have fhrp we don't have uh, for example vtp or some other layer 2 protocols cisco dna center has a feature called lan automation for automatically provisioning switch configuration for the underlay network based on best practices however Underlay network uh, switch configuration can also be done manually. LAN automation can provision the CLI, the SNMP credential for the switch and upgrade the devices to the desired software version. In addition, LAN automation can configure MTU, maximum transmission unit, loopbacks, routed point-to-point -point links, equal cost multipass or ECMP, bidirectional forwarding detection or BFD, and routed access to the uh, for the fabric nodes. Okay, well, here you can see uh, uh, with uh, for about the some um, method of the implementation of underlay, manual underlay, automated underlay, in manual underlay, routed network can be implemented, system MTU, loopback configuration, resiliency features, BFD, ECMP, NSF, multicast enabled, underlay ssm uh, or uh, for example source specific multicast sparse mode multicast cli snmp credential discover and manage network devices upgrade software and also in automated underlay uh, network setting ip address pool discover seed devices lan automation discover and onboard network devices configure underlay upgrade software and manage devices in the cisco dna center because of that now we know that in underlay we have two options of a design manual and automated automated is better is, uh, has preference and also the next option is that we use rotated environment with the uh, ISIS is it is better than OSPF because it is it has more scalability features also here we have some other options that we automatically can provision with the Cisco DNA center on the uh, underlay about the overlay, the overlay network is a logical network built on top of the underlay in order to create virtualized networks. These virtualized networks are created in the ST access fabric by encapsulating user traffic in the overlay network using IP packets on the boundary edge switches. The ST access fabric overlay has three main components. Okay, first, fabric control plane, second, fabric data plane, and third, fabric policy plane about the fabric control plane this plane provides logical mapping and resolution of endpoint id of users and devices uh, using locator id separation protocol or lisp about the fabric data plane this plane provides a logical overlay created by virtual extensible lan or vx lan packet encapsulation along with the group policy object or GPO and about the fabric policy plane within this plane network security policy is applied through a scalable group tags or SGTs and group based uh, policies. LISP or locator ID separation protocol simplifies routing environment by removing the need for routers to know every possible IP destination. LISP moves the remote destination information to a centralized map database that allows each router to manage only its local routes and queries the map database to find destination endpoint when needed. VXLAN with GPO provides support for both Layer 2 and Layer 3 virtual overlays and the ability to use VRF instances or virtual networks along with SGTs for security policy. First, let me to explain about the control plane with more detail. ST Access uses LISP for a control plane protocol to handle the mapping and resolution of endpoint identifiers. The two main things that LISP keeps track of, uh, of are the routing locator or RLOOK or attached router and the endpoint identifier or EID, which is the IP address or MAC address. Together, the RLOOK and EID provide the information needed for 
traffic forwarding even if the IP address moves within the edge of the network. Lisp enables the decoupling of the EID or endpoint identifier and the routing locator, which provides mobility to the endpoints. This technology differs from older collapsed core design where the endpoints were tied to the IP subnet and the location where they were attached to the network. LISP is an ITF standard protocol defined in RFC 6830 that runs on a control plane node within the SD access fabric. The control plane node contains the setting protocols and tables to provide the endpoint to location mapping system for the fabric overlay. LISP provides many advantages such as less CPU usage, usage smaller routing tables, host mobility, address mapping between IPv4, IPv6 or MAC, and VRF awareness. In this figure, we can see host mobility capability of Lisp as two laptops moves from switch 1 on floor 1 to switch 8 on floor 3 and preserve their IP address. Keep in mind that these switches are routed access switches at the ST access fabric edge. As you can see here, this is the, uh, for example, host with the IP address of 10.10.1.11/24 connected to LAN segment, okay, and uh, to, for example, switch one in floor one, it can move, okay, to, uh, to uh, the switch eight floor three without the changing in its IP address. For example, here you can see these two devices can go from one place to another place from floor one to floor three without changing the IP address. Why? Because the endpoint identifier is separated from the location. Actually, the endpoint identifier is the IP address of the hosts, okay? And the location is the routing locator of each switch. Yes, the endpoint identifier is it doesn't change, okay? But the routing locator change. It means that only when other systems needs to send traffic to this PC needs to know the new routing locator, the routing locator of the, for example, switch eight. Because of that, they can encapsulate the traffic with VXLAN to the switch eight, and after the encapsulation, traffic can be received by the, uh, for example, host without the changing the, about the IP addresses. This is the Lisp host mobility. About the data plane, the SD access fabric uses VXLAN encapsulation for the fabric data plane over the top of the underlay network. VXLAN encapsulates our IP UDP based using port 4789, which effectively creates the overlay within the SD access fabric. VXLAN is an IETF standard defined in RFC 7348 as a way to overlay a layer 2 network over a layer 3 network. Inside the VXLAN header is a VXLAN network identifier or VNI that defines the virtual network that the data plane traffic is part of. In addition, a scalable group tags or SGTs are defined in the group ID field of the VXLAN header as part of the group based policy option. Okay, in this figure, we can see the VXLAN GPU header along with the packet payload and associated packet headers. I'm not going to explain all of the detail, but let me to review the VXLAN GPU header. This is the original IP, original payload actually. And here you know that we have an inner IP header, inner MAC header. This is the layer two frame, okay? After adding the VXLAN header, includes some options like the VNID that allows 60 million possible VRFs and also group ID allows 64K possible SGT and some other options like the VLAN flags okay we will have the UDP header and here we use the port 4789 like include source port destination port UDP LAN checksum okay we have outer IP header and here uh, about the outer IP header we know that the, this is the new IP header include the source RLOOK IP address the uh, RLOOK of the uh, ITR or ingress tunnel router and also destination RLOOK IP address the RLOOK look of the ETR, Acres Tunnel Router, and after that outer MAC header includes some options. This is the layer 2, new layer 2 header. Actually, we know that this part, original payload, inner and I, inner IP, inner MAC, 
and as um, we can say this part is the overlay and after that from the UDP header outer IP header uh, outer MAC address can be working the underlay actually this part okay is working in the overlay and this part in a uh, part in the underlay this is the data plane but we will learn about it with more detail in future only let me to emphasize about the length of the, each of this header for example about the outer mac header this is uh, this has 14 byte length about the I, uh, outer ip header we have 20 byte length about the udp header we know that udp header has 8 byte length and also vxlan header has 8 byte as you can see here Links and uh, again uh, we have ethernet header 14 byte and after that the original ip header 20 byte okay don't forget here we have vnid inside the vxlan header and group id these two is so important as i mentioned before inside vxlan header is a vxlan network identifier or vni or vnid that defines the virtual networks that the data plane traffic is part of in addition a scalable group tags or sgts are defined in the group id field uh, of the vxlan header as part of the group based policy option about the automation the automation and orchestration features of the st access solution are provided by cisco dna center which really brings it to life the software defined nature of the solution into the campus environment the cisco dna center appliance exposes all controller functionality through northbound rest apis to enable automation and integration uh, possibilities as can as you can see here okay the cisco st access solution integrate with cisco ice through cisco platform exchange grid or px grid okay and rest apis for the exchange of client information and automation of fabric related configuration in addition a third party ipam solutions with inflow blocks and blue cat can be integrated with cisco uh, dna center actually cisco dna center has a set of network underlay workflows and fabric overlay workflows related to automation in network underlay we have some workflows and in fabric overlay also we have some workflows for example in network underlay we have these workflows global and site setting device discovery LAN automation in fabric overlay we have these workflows fabric sites fabric device roles virtual networks transits and group based policies let me to explain a, a little about each of them first in underlay with global and site setting workflow we have a hierarchical structure for the management of network setting with device discovery this is an automated discovery and inventory of network devices and here uh, with the LAN automation uh, workflow we have an automatic deployment of the underlay configuration of the switches okay in overlay or in fabric overlay with fabric site workflow this is an automated configuration of a group of fabric enabled network devices with the same control or data plane with fabric device role this is an automated configuration of network devices providing fabric function like the edge border and so on virtual networks this is an automated configuration for vrf segmentation transits this is an connectivity this is the connectivity between multiple ST access sites and with group based policies this is an automated configuration to enable group based security policies we will learn about each of them in future about the configuration and detail but now only we are understanding that in the Cisco DNA center we have a set of network uh, underlay workflows and fabric overlay workflows related to the automation now let me to explain about integrating wireless into the SD access. There are two methods of integrating wireless into an SD access network. The preferred method referred to as fabric mode wireless extends the SD access benefits for wired users over to wireless users. This is the a fabric mode wireless in the left figure you can see the fabric mode wireless and also the alternative method is the over the top or 
OTT uses the traditional Cisco Unified Wireless Local Mode configuration for wireless access. Let me to explain about each of them first about the Fabric Mode Wireless. This is the Fabric Mode Wireless. Okay, Fabric Mode Wireless requires a Fabric Mode enabled wireless LAN controllers and, uh, for example, a Fabric Mode enabled APs. Okay, actually, as you can see here, we have APs and wireless LAN controllers. Both of them are Fabric enabled, and it means that we have Fabric enabled wireless LAN controller, and uh, this is the Fabric enabled AP. We need these two components. The Fabric Mode APs, okay, this is the Fabric Mode AP, are the latest. 802.11 AC Wave 2 and Wave 1 APs associated with the wireless LAN controllers that are configured with fabric enabled SSIDs. The wireless LAN controllers configured for fabric mode communicate with the fabric control plane by registering MAC addresses, SGTs, and virtual networks. AP use a CAPWAP tunnel to the wireless LAN controller for the control plane communication, much like Cisco Unified Wireless. However, the client traffic in the data plane is weak LAN encapsulated and decapsulated by the fabric mode APs. The wireless LAN controller integration within the SD access control plane support wireless client roaming between APs in the fabric. It means that we use CAPWAP tunnels between the fabric enabled APs and fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers. Okay, this is for control plane. But for data plane, we use again the weak LAN actually. We are encapsulating the traffic from the first AP to the receiver, to, from the source AP to the receiver AP with the weak LAN. Okay, actually, in this method of integrating wireless uh, to the uh, ST WAN in fabric, ST access in the fabric mode wireless, we use two uh, protocol. For control protocol, we use CAPWAP and for data protocol or data plane, we use VXLAN. It is so important. Okay, as you can see here. Also here we have some detail. The details are beyond the scope of this video, but now we can understand that CAPWAP and VXLAN are using in the fabric mode wireless. But don't forget you need to have fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers and fabric enabled APs with uh, the at, uh, for latest 802.11 AC Wave 2 and Wave 1. Okay. Also, let me to explain about the over the top or OTT wireless mode. If you need to support older models APs, you still can use the over the top method of uh, wireless integration with the SD access fabric. When you use this method, the control plane and data plane traffic from the APs continue to use CAPWAP based tunnels like the traditional wireless implementation in the Cisco Unified Wireless method. In this mod, uh, mode, the SD access fabric provides only a support to the wireless LAN controller. This method can also be used as a migration step to full SD access in the future. Actually here, we don't have any new feature related to the wireless. Actually, it means that that the SD access only support the wireless. And uh, you know that here we don't use the benefits of the SD access. For example, we don't have any direct tunnel between the, for example, two APs. Here we are sending the, the um, data traffic after encapsulation with CAPWAP to the non-fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers. And after the encapsulation and, and, and re-encapsulation, it will forward it to the receiver access point. And then here after the encapsulation, the traffic can be received by the, uh, for example, wireless client. Actually, here we have exactly same network that we saw previously in the traditional wireless LAN controller deployment when we wanted to use the Cisco Unified Wireless. Okay, actually we can say if you want to use the benefits of the SD access, you need to use fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers and also fabric enabled APs and use only the fabric uh, enabled or fabric mode wireless. All right, now let me to explain a little about the security and ICE in the ICE functionality in the Cisco SD access solution. Cisco ICE is a secure network access platform that enables control, visibility, and consistency for users and devices accessing the network. Within the SD access fa fabric, Cisco ICE provides all the identity and policy services. Cisco ICE is a critical component of SD access for policy 
enforcement. It allows for the dynamic mapping of users and endpoints to scalable groups, thereby simplifying the end-to-end -end security policy in the fabric. To support the group-based policy end-to-end, -end, Cisco TrustSec is leveraged to enable SGT information to be inserted into the VXLAN headers in the data plane traffic while also supporting multiple virtual networks or VNs. Cisco I supports AAA services, group, policy, and endpoint profiling, and Cisco DNA Center orchestrates the policy workflows to use the functionality. The integration of ICE and DNA Center is done by establishing trust through ICE Peaks Grid services and by enabling external RESTful services or ERS to allow policies and contracts to flow between systems. Cisco DNA Center can create SGTs and send them to Cisco ICE via REST APIs. Okay, a scalable group tag or SGT consists of a 16-bit value contained in the VXLAN header. SGTs are also known as security groups and Cisco eyes manage the SGTs for a given SD access fabric. Although Cisco DNA Center drives the management of the policies, Cisco eyes is tightly integrated with DNS Center through REST APIs to provide the SGT information needed to enforce policy. The deployment of Cisco ICE can occur through a standalone appliance or through a distributed set of appliances based on the uh, functionality. Also, TrustSec is a complementary enforcement technology that allows endpoint security management without the need to maintain access lists on all the network devices where the endpoints are connected. The ultimate goal of TrustSec is to assign an SGT to a user's or devices traffic at ingress inbound into the network and then enforce the access elsewhere in the infrastructure. The tag is assigned to login and enforce with the, within the network egress in enforcement. Okay, Each TrustSec design must have the following SGT classification, SGT propagation. SGT classification means ICE is used to classify devices based on authentication and authorization policies. And about the SGT propagation, propagation is done either in line or by using SGT exchange protocol or SXP. All right, now let me to explain a little about the overlay network design. You know that in the SD access fabric, the overlay networks are used for transporting user traffic across the fabric. The fabric encapsulation also carries a scalable group information used for traffic segmentation inside the overlay virtual networks or VNs. Consider the following in the design when deploying virtual networks. First, virtual network or macro segmentation. Second, SGTs or micro segmentation. Third, reduce subnets and simplify DHCP management. And finally, fourth, avoid overlapping IP subnets. Let me to explain a little about them. First, virtual networks or macro segmentation. Use virtual networks when requiring dictate isolation at both the data plane and control plane. In general, if devices need to communicate with each other, they should be placed in the same virtual network. If communication is required between different virtual networks, use an external firewall or other devices to enable inter-virtual network or inter-VN communication. Virtual network provides the same behavior and isolation as VRFs or virtual routing and forwardings. Second, SGTs or micro segmentation. Segmentation using SGTs allows for simple to manage group based policies and enables granular data plane isolation between groups of endpoints within a virtualized network. Using SGTs also enable a scalable deployment of policy without having to do cumbersome update for these policies based on IP addresses. Third, reduce subnets and simplify DHCP management. In the overlay, 
IP subnets can be stretched across the fabric without flooding issues that can happen on large layer 2 network. Use fewer subnets and DHCP scopes for simpler IP addressing and DHCP scope management. Subnets are sized according to the services that they support versus being constrained by the location of a gateway. Enabling the optional broadcast flooding uh, means layer 2 flooding feature can limit the subnet size based on the additional bandwidth and endpoint processing requirement for the traffic mix with a, within a, a specific deployment. And finally, avoid overlapping IP subnets. Different overlay networks can support overlapping address space, but be aware that most deployments require shared services across all virtual networks and some may use inter-VN communication. Avoid overlapping address space so that the additional operational complexity of adding a network address translation NAT device is not required for shared service uh, communication. Now let me to explain about the fabric design. When you design SD access, each fabric site has its own set of control plane nodes, border nodes and edge nodes. Here are some key characteristics of a fabric site. First, an IP pool or subnet part of a single fabric site. Layer 2 and layer 3 mobility within the single fabric site. A layer 2 extension anycast gateways within a single fabric site and a fabric site that is separate from other fabric that may exist externally. In this figure, we can see an example of an ST access fabric site. About the control plane node design, the fabric control plane node contains the database used to identify an endpoint location in the network. This is a central and critical function for the fabric to operate. A control plane node that is overloaded and is slow to respond results in application traffic loss on initial packets. If the fabric control node is down, endpoints inside the fabric fail to establish communication to remote endpoints that are not cached in the local database. For redundancy, it is recommended to deploy two control plane nodes to ensure high availability of the fabric site as each node contain a copy of control plane information acting in an active active state. The device supporting the control plane should be chosen to support the EID to RLOOK binding CPU and memory needs for an organization based on the number of endpoints. Border nodes and edge nodes register with and use all control plane nodes so redundant nodes chosen should be uh, of the same type for consistent performance. In this figure, the wireless LAN controller is configured to communicate with two control plane nodes for Enterprise 192.168.10.1 and 192.168.20 or 10.2, okay? And as you can see here, we have two control plane nodes for guest 192.168.255.1 and 192.168.255.2. Two, okay, this is beyond the scope of our video, but as you can see here, we uh, configured multiple control nodes for the wireless LAN controller. As a summary, the database for identifying endpoints is responsibility of the fabric control plane nodes in the SD access fabric. This is an important function for the fabric to operate well. If the control plane node were down for whatever reason, fabric endpoints would have to rely on the local database information for connectivity, which might or might not work. Cisco DNA Center helped to automate the control plane functions in the SD access fabric. It is recommended when designing the control plane to deploy the functionality on two nodes for high availability. Each control plane node contain a copy of the control plane information in the database that can be used to respond to request for endpoint location information. You can collocate the fabric control function within the border nodes if the border nodes can support the endpoint scale 
requirements. Some border nodes that are core switched do not support the requirement and additional control plane nodes such as physical or virtual rotors need to be used. SD access fabrics can support up to six control plane nodes in a wire deployment and wireless LAN, uh, LAN controllers and uh, can communicate with up to four control plane nodes. What does it mean? It means that for wired network we can use up to six control plane for wireless net network or in the with the wireless LAN controllers we can communicate with up to four control plane nodes about the border design the border design for the sd access fabric involve connectivity to the outside or external networks the next hop after the border or the edge of the fabric uh, for inter vrf instance routing is to use a fusion router or a firewall these devices perform inter vrf instance route leaking in order to fuse or tie the vrf instances together there are some design options to consider depending on the location of the shared services dna center active directory dhcp and dns are examples of shared service these services can be in the global routing table or grt or can be in another separate vrf instance shared service in the global routing table include the following the fabric border node exchange global routing tables routes using ebgp with the fusion router the fabric border nodes handle the routing adjacencies for each vrf or vn instance the fusion router fuses the sd access virtual networks into the global routing table for the external network also shared service in separate vrf instance include the following the fusion router established per vn or virtual network routing adjacency with border nodes for each bgp address family this design option comes with challenges such as manual configuration loss of sgt context and also traffic hairpinning we will learn about these options with more detail in future videos all right about the segmentation unified policy was a major driver in the sd access solution to allow for the same policy to be applied to both wired and wireless network enforced at the access layer segmentation adds the un to unified policy by enabling vrf instance or virtual network and sgt segmentation to be deployed in the sd access fabric vrf instance or virtual network segmentation involve creation of a separate vrf instance for each group of device or users contained inside it to extend segmentation beyond the single fabric site transits are used and sd access can use distributed campus and sd van transit which allow for the uh, virtual network information to be natively carried inside the packets on the other hand ip transits allow for van connectivity but the packets are decapsulated into native ip packets which causes a loss of sgt vn policy information sgt segmentation uses metadata to assign tags in order to enforce group policy in sd access fabric edge and border nodes get security group access control list or sgacls downloaded from ice to enforce policy based on SGTs. Within data center, SGTs are referred to as scalable groups or SGs. In this figure, the, or this figure pro provides an example of micro segmentation within the SD access fabric. Although sales and marketing security groups coexist on the same fabric, they are restricted from talking to each other. About virtual networks, a virtual network or VN is a separate VRF instance that's, that provide isolation for host pools or IP subnets. VNs serve the same basic purpose as VRF instance in traditional networks. Within SD access, the Lisp control plane assigns to every endpoint a VN. Any communication between endpoints in different VNs must go through a fusion router or a firewall. VN assignment is based on the attached host pool. VNs are configured on all the all of the border and edge nodes in the SD access fabric and in addition a default VN is used for any pools that are not assigned a specific VNs. 
Inside the VXLAN header is a field that includes the VN identifier or VNI, as I showed you previously, which is used for traffic inside the fabric. There are 16 million VNI segments possible, so the VNs or virtual networks can be separate from one another, and VRF based routing or firewall policy enforcement is possible. In this figure, or this figure can show us the use of three VNs for macro segmentation along with scalable groups or SGTs for micro segmentation. All right, now let me to explain about the scalability of SD access design. Site reference models can be leveraged to scale the SD access fabric from very small to large site size. Okay, I will explain them first about the very small site. A single switch stack covering one wiring closet with fewer than 2000 endpoints, up to eight virtual network and up to 100 APs. This is a very small site. All border, control plane, edge, and wireless LAN controller nodes are in a, are in a single, uh, for example, platform. Okay, now let me to explain about the, some of the very small site design considerations. In very small sites, high availability and site survivability requirement are not common. Shared services are present in all reference design for DHCP, DNS, wireless LAN controller, and ICE. These services can be deployed in a remote data center and connected to the fabric through a fusion router, or they can be deployed locally with direct connections. High availability can be deployed in the design through a stack-wise technology with a stackable switches or with multiple supervisors if chassis-based switches are used. Wireless LAN controllers can be attached to the fabric or an embedded Catalyst 9800 wireless LAN controller can be used. In this table, actually this table shows reference guideline for very small sites. Let me to review. About the ST access component description, endpoint up to 2000, IP pools up to 8 because we have 8 virtual network, A virtual network up to 8, border nodes up to 1, control plane node up to 1, edge nodes up to 1, wireless LAN controller up to 1, access point up to Hundred. Now let me to explain about the a small site. A small site means a single office building to support fewer than ten thousand endpoints, up to thirty-two virtual networks, and up to two hundred access points. The border and control plane nodes are in one or two nodes, and a wireless LAN controller can has an optional redundancy nodes. About the a small site design consideration, high availability with a small sites typically collocate border and control plane node function on a pair of collapsed core switches. Multiple link connections should be used between the core switch for link redundancy and added resiliency. And since the endpoint comes are usually higher with a small sites than with very small site, embedded wireless LAN controllers are not recommended unless there, there are fewer than 200 APs and 4,000 endpoints. The higher endpoint and access point counts are used physical wireless LAN controllers deployed with high availability connected to the fabric. The wireless LAN controllers should be connected using a service switch directly to the border node or attached to the fusion router locally at the fabric site. This table shows a reference guideline for a small sites. Let me to review. About the endpoint up to 10,000, about the IP pools up to 100, about the virtual network up to 32, border nodes up to 2, control plane node up to 2, edge nodes up to 25, wireless LAN controllers up to 2, and access point up to 200. Now, let me to explain about the medium site. About a medium site, a medium sized building with many wiring closets or multiple buildings to support fewer than 25,000 endpoints, up to 64 virtual networks, and up to 1,000 access points. All border, control plane, and wireless LAN controller nodes are on distributed devices with high availability uh, configuration. All right, now let me to explain a little about the medium site design consideration. In medium site, dedicated border and control plane nodes are used for high availability. Inter switch links should be used between the core switch for link redundancy and added resiliency. 
The control plane nodes would also connect to the core switches. Embedded wireless LAN controllers are not used in medium size due to the larger endpoint cons. Because these sites are larger, physical wireless LAN controllers are needed and are typically deployed in a high availability pair for redundancy. The wireless LAN controllers should be connected using a service switch directly to the border nodes or attached to the fusion router locally at the fabric site. This table shows reference guideline for medium sites. Look at here. About the endpoint, we have up to 25 endpoints. About the IP pool, up to 300. About the virtual network, up to 64. About the border node, up to 2. About the control plane node, up to 4. About the age nodes, up to 250. About the wireless LAN controllers, up to 2. And about the access point, up to 1000. Now, let me to explain about the large site. A large building with many wiring closets or multiple buildings to support fewer than 50,000 endpoints up to 64 virtual networks and up to 2,000 access points. All border, control plane and wireless LAN controller nodes are on distributed devices with high availability configuration along with multiple border exist. Let me to explain about the large site design consideration. Typically, a large site is designed with a three-tier network that consists of separate core distribution and access layer. These larger site networks are designed to support up to 50,000 endpoints. Multiple device exist, uh, point exist point uh, with dedicated data center connections a shared service block and internet services are common in a multi-fabric deployment the headquarters locations might use a large site design there may also be a perimeter edge firewall used to filter internet traffic for the site cisco dna center and ice may be deployed at the site or at the data center that was that has dedicated connectivity or connection to the site high availability pairs for both the border and the control plane nodes with extra control plane nodes dedicated to guests can be used. Physical wireless LAN controllers with high availability should be deployed for large sites, and the wireless LAN controllers usually have connectivity to the service switch or through the border nodes. This table lists reference guideline for large sites. As you can see, endpoint we have up to 50,000, IP pools up to 500, virtual network up to 64, border nodes up to 4, control plane node up to 6, edge node up to 100. 1000 wireless LAN controller up to 2 and access point we have up to 2000 all right now let me to explain about the wireless integration in ST access you know that we have two solution fabric wireless and also over the top or OTT for implementing or extending wireless in the ST access first about the fabric wireless fabric wireless is the best option for ST access if you have local wireless LAN controllers and new fabric mode APs this option allows wireless traffic to take advantage of security benefits with using SGTs with ST access fabric with fabric wireless APs are responsible for delivering wireless traffic into and out of the wired network the wireless LAN controller plane still uses CAPWAP and continues to utilize low latency connections between the wireless LAN controllers and the access points. The collocation requirement of the wireless LAN controller is per ST access fabric, so other remote ST access fabrics still need their own wireless LAN controllers. Okay? Consideration for fabric placement of the wireless LAN controllers are important when integrating wireless into ST access. Larger deployment typically have a shared service block in which the wireless LAN controllers can connect and integrate near the core of the fabric. However, the preferred connectivity for wireless LAN controllers involve multiple chassis connections with VSS or virtual switching system or switch stacks using a stack-wise technology to implement multi-chassis ether channel for link and switch redundancy here you can see we have one fabric fabric enabled wireless LAN controller and here we have VSS uh, actually this is this can be multiple uh, switch that we in implemented the virtual switching system here because of that we can configure layer 2 multi chassis ether channel okay fabric mode APs this is the fabric mode AP 
it uses the intra VRF instance, or we can say in in the Fabric Wireless, Fabric Modes AP use the intra VRF instance, which is the same VRF instance that is used for the underlay in the ST Access Fabric. The intra VRF instance uses the global routing table or GRT and provide connectivity for the network between the edge switch and the border switch. You know that here we have underlay, we have overlay. Underlay in underlay, we use global routing table, and because of that, Fabric mode APs are working in the uh, global routing table and because of that they have connectivity uh, to the underlay. This is the fabric wireless but here we have some details that we will learn about them in future. This figure shows the fabric wireless components in the SD axis. Let me to review. Here we have the fabric enabled wireless LAN controller and here we have multiple fire, uh, fabric mode APs and also as you can see we have the uh, a border node and control node and here we have some edge nodes okay and this is the VSS uh, uh, switch or if you want you can use a stackable switch and finally we will have multi chassis ether channel about the over the top or OTT wireless ST access supports over the top wireless as another option when dedicated wireless LAN controllers and newer fabric mode APs are not in an option this is the traditional Cisco Unify wireless design model which uses local mode but lacks the advantage of the ST access fabric integration with OTT you still get features like mobility with roaming IP address management and simplified configuration and troubleshooting typically Typically, the wireless LAN controller is located in the data center or in a service block near the enterprise network that is running SD Access. The wireless traffic uses CAPWAP between the APs and the wireless LAN controllers. In this mode, APs can exist both inside and outside the SD Access fabric because the SD Access fabric benefits are not being leveraged. All right, about the multicast and ST access in the earlier versions of ST access, head end replication of multicast packet into the fabric was standard. This means that the head end border had to receive and replicate all the multicast packet from the H suites and forward them. On. However, recent versions of SD Access have multicast features that can be configured manually within the fabric switch or down through LAN automation. This reduces head end replication overhead on the border switch. And multicast source can be supported both inside and outside the SD Access fabric. With PIM implementation, a rendezvous point or RP is used on the border for all multicast clients in the overlay. The multicast protocol configuration can be done within the Cisco DNA Center. Both PIM source specific multicast SSM and PIM sparse mode or PIM SM are supported with SD Access. When using IP multicast in the overlay, the use of a RP or rendezvous point is required. Multicast source discovery protocol MSTP can be used for rendezvous point redundancy if desired. About the ST Access design, when you are designing an ST Access solution, in addition to the typical business requirement, there are a number of key technical factors that need to be considered before you develop your final design. This list is not exhaustive but should give you some design guidance to keep in mind. Greenfield or Brownfield deployment, number of users, geographic location, shared service location, transit types, fusion routers, van and internet connectivity, security policy and also high availability.